So the quantum world is extremely exciting and you know it's very counterintuitive to the way we live as human beings because we're used to certain things and the way the quantum world works which is basically the study of things that are really small the way it works is really different from the way the macroscopic world works to give you an idea in classical mechanics so there are two types of mechanics right there are two types of physics one is classical mechanics and the other is quantum mechanics in classical mechanics if i flip a coin and i know everything about the coin if i know the air drag if i know the weight of the coin the metal it's made from basically if i know a lot of data about the coin i can predict whether it's going to land heads or it's going to land tails with 100% accuracy and that's what classical mechanics says it says that if you know all the preconditions then you will know the post condition with full accuracy whereas quantum mechanics works differently if i take an atom of cesium or rubidium and allow it to decay then whether it emits a particle or not is completely random and by completely random you can know everything about the cesium atom you can know where it came from uh, what the temperature is you can know everything but you will still not be able to predict whether it decays and emits a particle or it doesn't now a long time ago niels bohr came to a conference and he surprised everybody when he says remember that cesium atom we were talking about well both alternatives actually really happen which means that the cesium atom both emits a particle as well as doesn't emit a particle and what niels bohr went on to say was that both of these events happen in separate universes now a gentleman named hugh everett came out and he built on that hypothesis he he called it the hughes many world interpretation where he says that every quantum event spawns a new universe right so this is we are talking about the multiverse i know marvel made it super popular but i do believe there is a multiverse most top physicists astrophysicists scientists most of them believe there is a multiverse and quantum events generate new multiverses and it works exactly the way a film like the right way to interpret this is to think of a film strip that diverges say there's a movie and then just like bandersnatch there's event a and event b and there are now two different universes except we don't really have control over this right unlike an episode of black mirror we don't really have control over this right these are quantum events there are many many cells in your body that have particles that exhibit quantum properties and all of these are in, are are generating new universes so it's really there are an infinite number of universes and what uh, some physicists go on to hypothesize is that um you will always branch out to the universes where you have consciousness because in the universes where you don't have consciousness you you don't exist so we're not having this conversation or, or you know you're not listening to this podcast the quantum suicide experiment is basically a thought experiment that builds on this idea if i recreate the schrodinger's cat experiment which is you put a cat in a box you attach it uh, or or you put a bomb in the box which is connected to a giga counter which is connected to uh, a cesium atom so if the cesium atom decays then you know the bomb explodes and the cat dies or you know there's some cyanide and the cyanide you know gets into the box and the cat dies or a particle is not emitted and the cat survives and you are not going to know whether the cat died or survived till you observe the event the quantum suicide is basically the same experiment except from the view of the cat say you sat inside a box and i'm talking about you and you had a gun pointed to your head and you're pointing the gun at yourself and the gun was connected to one of these counters which was connected to a cesium atom now if the cesium atom emits a particle then the gun goes off and you know you blow your brains out and you die immediately if the cesium atom does not emit a particle then you just hear a click sound and the gun doesn't go off now what you'd expect or rather what most people would expect most people unaware of the quantum world would expect is that you know maybe you get lucky a couple of times right maybe we just started on repeat we just started on a loop and we just keep checking whether cesium decays or not um or emits a particle or not and you would expect to probably hear one or two clicks if you got lucky and then eventually you'd die but what scientists hypothesize is that what you would hear is click 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 times infinity and the reason for this is because 
because you're branching out into different universes, the universe where you actually die, where the gun goes off, you're dead. So you have zero awareness. What's happening is you're only branching out in the universes where you have awareness. So you will always go into the universe where cesium doesn't decay and doesn't have the gun fire off. That in essence is the quantum suicide experiment. The cool thing about this experiment is that if anybody actually ran this experiment and they recorded how many times uh, the gun made a click sound, they could come out of the box and show it to the rest of the world and say, hey, you know, the gun didn't go off at all. The quantum world is real. Quantum suicide, I mean, the experiment works. The only problem is the quantum suicide experiment is very observer specific. So for somebody who is outside the box, in almost all the universes, you will die and they'll be celebrating your funeral in the afternoon. It's only you branching out in the universes where you still have consciousness, right? So in the one universe where you survive, it, everything is great and you probably win a Nobel Prize or something. But in all the other universes, you're dead and somebody's celebrating your funeral. Now, one depressing part about the quantum suicide experiment, something that I thought about for a lot that actually gave me an existential crisis was the fact that if this actually works this way, then you will actually never die. Because say you fell sick at the age of 70 with, with some disease and what would, just, what would happen is you'd keep branching out to the universes where you are still alive and you will continue to suffer for infinity, right? This was my, this was my big problem with the quantum suicide experiment or, or with the quantum, with the many worlds hypothesis. Because you will always branch out in the universes where you have consciousness, you will keep branching out to the universes where you're still alive, however poor that state of aliveness is. Which means that if you're in pain, you're going to continue being in pain. Um, but I read this book a long time ago called Our Mathematical Universe by Max Tegmark. Uh, and he put that problem to rest. He said that consciousness is a spectrum. It's not that you will always be fully conscious. There are many states of consciousness. And what will happen as you get older, um, say, you know, you get really sick, what would eventually happen is maybe your kidneys will fail and your entire body will, will fill with ammonia or urea or something and you will start losing consciousness. And what will happen is you'll keep branching out in the universes where you have a lower and lower degree of consciousness until you fall into a coma where you'll be barely conscious barely conscious up to a point where you won't have to worry about it anymore. So that's how, you know, that saved me from an existential crisis. <laughs>